We're going to look at expected value. So the expected value um, is average results you should expect to approximate if you repeat the experiment a large number of times. So a game is fair if the expected value equals to zero. And a game is unfair if the expected value does not equal to zero. So again, that expected value is the average results you should expect to approximate if you repeat it a large number of times. So if we did it a lot of times, would we get that expected value? If we do, it's kind of like if we look at flipping a coin, our expected value would be, you know, we get heads one out of two times. So it's like a 50-50 chance of getting either one. When you first do a small grouping, you probably won't always get that. But if you do a lot of them, the large number, you should get about um, half of them heads and half of them tails. That's kind of what we're talking about. But in, when you do a small number, sometimes it's not always going to be there. But the larger the number, the more uh, likely it's going to be an expected value of fairness. So for example one, we want to evaluate an insurance policy. Suppose that you want to insure a high-end laptop, computer, an iPhone, a trail bike, and your textbooks. The table lists the values of these items and the probabilities that the items will be stolen over the next year. So first of all, we're going to predict what the insurance company can expect to pay in claims on your policy. And the second thing is to, is $100 a reasonable, reasonable premium for the policy? All right, so again, we're insuring some items and we're going to look at um, predicting what the insurance company can expect to pay. Now we have some values here in um, our chart here of what our laptop, the value of it, the iPhone, the trail bike, and the textbooks. We've got the value, the probability of being stolen, and the expected payout by the insurance company. So for all four items, so let's go to example one, and we're looking at um, part A, and we're looking at all four items. So for our computer, plus the iPhone, plus the bike, plus your books. So the, for the first one, the, um, the expected payout, because that's what we were asked, predict what the insurance can expect to pay, we're looking at the expected payout. And that expected payout is found by taking the value times the probability of it being stolen and that gets us the expected payout. So in this case, it's going to be $40 for our computer. It is $12 for the iPhone. It will be $6 for the bike. And it will be $32 for the textbooks. And if we total those all up, it'll be $90. So for part B, it said is $100 a reasonable premium for the policy. Well, if we're paying out, if it's going to cost them $90 and they're charging us $100, then that's not too bad. It's only $10 above. We can say yes because the company needs to make a profit, right? Otherwise, it's not going to um, be in business very long. And they're only charging you $10 more. So it's not an unreasonable um, request. So that would be, um, that $100 is reasonable and um, because it's not very much more and they want to make a little bit of profit. And they make profit because they have a lot of people who insured their items. So you gain a little bit as you do all of those. All right, let's go look at example two. So computing the expected value when flipping coins, what is the number of heads we can expect when we flip four coins? fair coins. So fair coins means that they're not altered in any way and they flip both ways pretty much equally. So outcomes from flipping the four coins, we can use the following tree diagram. So we can make a tree diagram to figure out what's going on. We've done tree diagrams in the past and if we follow them, we end up with a head, 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 a head, 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 tails, a head, head, tails, head, 
and a head, head, tails, tails. Then we go head, tails, head, head, which is right there, and a head, tail, head, tail, and a head, tail, tail, head, and a head, tail, tail, tail. And then at the bottom, we have tail, head, 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 tail, head, head, tail, tail, head, tail, head, tail, head, tail, 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 head, head, tail, tail, head, tail, 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 head, and a tail, 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 tail. So we use that tree diagram as we flipped one coin, we flipped two coins, three coins, and four coins to figure out what we've got going on here. And we want to know what is the number of heads we can expect when we flip four uh, fair coins. So what we're going to look at is we're going to make a little bit of a chart here. So we're going to look at the number of heads. And then we're going to look at the probability. Oops, I guess we don't need that line. That's okay. It'll be fine. All right, so for our number of heads, we might get one or zero heads, one head, two head, three heads, and four heads. So we're going to go look at, whenever we had zero heads, that means we got all tails, right? So we have no heads, it's going to be tails, all of them, and that's only going to incur one time. And it's one out of, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. For the eight up here and eight down here, so that eight plus eight will get us 16 possibilities. And then if we look at how many um, do we get where we get two or one head, well, if we're looking through here, all of these have more than one head. This one has one head. And then if we look through down here, we have another one that has one head. So these two are the ones that have one head and three tails. So we have, um, oops, let's see if there's another one. Let's see. Oh. Let's see, one head is probably going to be down here with the tails. So we have one up here, we've got one here, we've got one here, and we've got one here. So we've actually got four. So here's one head, here's one head, here's one head, and here is one head. So we actually have four of them. So that will be four out of 16. And then if we're looking for two heads at the top, We've got one here, we've got one here, we've got one here, so that's three. And if we go down to the bottom, we've got one here, one here, and one here, so that's three more, so that's a total of six with two heads and two tails. And then for part three, or with three heads, so here we've got one with three heads, Another one with three heads, so that's two. Here's another one with three heads, so that's three. And then down here, we've got three heads, so that's four. And if we scan, we're not going to see any more. So we have four out of 16. And then if we're looking for four heads, the only time we'll have four heads is that very first one where we rolled all heads. So it'll be back to one out of 16. So it's asking us again, what is the number of heads we can expect when we flip four fair coins? All right. So we're going to multiply each of our outcomes by their probabilities to figure out what it is. So we're going to take um, each of the probabilities and multiply it by their outcome. So we'll have 0 times 1 over 16 plus we have the 1 times 4 out of 16 plus 2 times 6 out of 16 plus 3 times 4 out of 16 plus 4 times 1 out of 16. Well, anything times zero will get us zero. Plus 
1 times anything is going to be itself, 4 out of 16. 2 times 6 out of 16, well, that's like 2 over 1, so that'll be 2 times 6 will get us 12 out of 16 over 1. Same thing will happen over here. We'll have 3 over 1, so 3 times 4 will get us 12 out of 16 times 1. And same thing will be over here, because when we multiply, we just multiply the top and the bottom, so we'll get 4 out of 16. Now, if we add all of those, they're all the same denominator, so that's why we didn't reduce any of them. So we've all got them over 16, so 4 plus 12 will be 16. 16 plus 12 would be 28, plus 4 would be 32. And then we can reduce that. 16 goes into 32, or 32 is divisible by 16 two times. So we would expect to flip two heads when flipping four coins. So this actually, it corresponds to a 50-50 chance which is what I talked about in the beginning. If we flip a coin, because um, of flipping a coin, let me finish writing first. If we flip a coin, it has two sides. So we would expect half the times we get heads, half the time we get tails. And if we do um, the number of heads times the probability, then that gives us an idea of what could happen, how many heads would come about. And so we can expect that we would get two of them.